live again. Okay, so our oxidation numbers, okay, our oxidation states. We just did some practice before we started class. What we're doing is applying these rules. Okay, they are numbered differently from what the textbook did because I've got my own version of rules from when I've taught it before. Okay? The ones that are absolute critical to have memorized are really going to be 3 and 4. So they're not put in very nice order, but okay, it works. Okay? Those two are going to be huge rules to have memorized. Okay? You need to know that when you see oxygen, it's a negative 2 oxidation state. You need to know that when you see hydrogen, it's a plus one oxidation state. Yes, there's an exception. I won't test you on that. Halides will be a negative one. Okay? We do have an exception there that you might actually see. Halides are lower than oxygen in our memorization rule. And that's because when I bind a halogen to oxygen, oxygen carries the minus two. The halogen is going to have to adjust to the oxygen. Okay? So our oxygen is going to trump. Right? So we have to have these rules set up. The last part of it is uh, statement four, which is really just looking at an equation. If we add up the oxidation states or the oxidation numbers of every atom within that molecule, we will get the overall charge on the molecule okay? or on our unit. Okay? So if we go through and take a look at four examples between charge and oxidation state, okay? if we take a look at charge, what is the charge on our first uh, unit? Zero. First unit is copper. Its charge is zero. How do you know it's zero? Because it's in its elemental state? No. No. Upper right-hand corner. The upper right-hand corner has what written there? Nothing. Nothing. It's zero. What about the next one? It is plus two. How do we know it's plus two? Upper right hand corner, it says plus two. Yes. Can you explain why I was wrong on that? Just so I, because it'll provide some understanding for me. So, what it's coming down to is how we get to the same answer. Okay. Your oxidation state for elements will be zero. Okay. Okay, that is true. Okay. What I want you to do, go through is instead of memorizing that rule, memorize that your charge is always given to you. It is always. Doesn't matter what we're looking at. How do we know it's always given to you? Upper right-hand corner. Okay. okay. So it's just a question of how you got that information. Your information required a secondary rule to memorize. My version, I gave you the answer. Okay. okay. So it's still the same conclusion. It's just how you're getting to it. Okay. So the only reason when they write it in the elemental state that they don't put the charge on the upper right-hand corner is because it is assumed that you know that it's zero. It is zero it is because zero. there's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah. The symbol for nothing is, is, nothing. is zero. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So what's our charge on nitrate? Negative one. Charge on sulfate. Sorry. Right. Yeah. I was asking the right thing. Negative two. All right. So we look in the upper right-hand corner for all of those. Luckily enough, I happen to pick the right color. And our slides tap out. And we've got all our charges. When we move to oxidation state, it applies to an atom and only an atom. Okay? So we can go through and use that equation, mathematics of it here, okay, if we start here. So for our first unit, what's our first element? Copper. How many of that element are there? What's the oxidation state? X, we technically don't know our oxidation state. I know, I know, it's a bit silly, but it's true. What's the next element? There isn't one. Okay, so we can now say equals the overall charge. What's the overall charge? Zero. Zero. What does X have to equal? Zero. Zero. What's our oxidation state? Zero. Zero. Okay. It's definitely a bit silly to go through all that mathematics, but that's what we're trying to separate the idea between oxidation state and charge. Charge is the sum of all of the oxidation states. If we only have one element, the charge and the oxidation state will be the same thing. There isn't a choice. Okay? Just because the number is the same doesn't mean you have the same explanation for getting that number. Okay? So what happens when we move to the next one? How many elements do we have? Or what element do we have? How many of those do we have? 
We have one copper. What's its oxidation state? One plus two. X. What's its charge? Yeah, plus two. Plus two. Okay. Solve for X. X is plus two. What's the oxidation state on copper two? Plus two. So plus two. Okay, so the charge ends up being the same. What happens when we move to nitrate? Okay. So I could go through and ask the question, what's the charge on, or sorry, the oxidation state of nitrogen? One of the answers is going to be minus 1. And someone will guaranteed bubble that in because they see a minus 1. What is that minus 1? The charge applies to the molecule, not the atom. To figure out our oxidation state for nitrogen, okay, we'll start. How many elements do we have of nitrogen? One. There's one. What's its oxidation state? X. Plus. How many oxygens do we have? Three. What's its oxidation state? Negative two. Okay. I would argue we have two ways since we haven't solved this one yet. I'm going to actually say that's Y. It's an oxidation state. We always have to solve for our oxidation states. This has to equal our overall charge. What's our overall charge? Negative, Negative one. Right. Now we don't know how to solve this. We have two variables and only one equation. One of our rules, though, is that the oxidation state for oxygen is negative 2, which means y equals negative 2. So I can do that extra substitution, and I now have this equation. Now I can go through and solve x minus 6 equals negative 1. Add 6 to both sides, and I get x equals plus 5. What did I say x was equal to? Don't tell me plus 5. Not minus 1. The oxidation state of nitrogen. Okay? And we would then say nitrogen has an oxidation state of plus 5. The oxidation state on oxygen? Negative 2. Okay? So I could give a big, long, complicated-looking formula and say, what's the oxidation state of oxygen in this compound? Negative 2. How much work did you have to do? Absolutely nothing. Make sure you answer the question that's asked. Okay? If I ask for something easy, give me the easy answer. If I ask for something hard, then go ahead and probably skip it and come back later. Nothing's easy, okay? easy with you, Mike. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put it in the oxygen just for the heck of it. Is there a question? Um, I'm still kind of confused. Why did you put for the oxidation state of um, oxygen negative 2? Because of the Ah, I was hoping to go a little bit faster. Oh, and I froze it. No, I didn't. Our oxidation state rules, number 3A is oxygen is negative 2 oxidation state. If you don't know that, can you solve the problem? No. No. So some information must be specified for you. That is one of the rules that you absolutely must know. If you don't know that, you can't solve it. Okay. So let's try one more. Take a look at the sulfate. What's the oxidation state on oxygen? Negative 2. Just checking. Okay. So we got our oxygen oxidation state at negative 2. Let's solve for our oxidation state on the sulfur. How many sulfurs do we have? How much uh, oxidation state on sulfur? Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, oxygens, how many are there? Oxidation state. How do we know it's negative two? It's our rule. Equals our overall charge. What's our overall charge? Okay. So we can simplify. X minus eight equals negative two. Add eight to both sides. We get x equals, thank you for whoever said the plus 6. Remember, again, I want to hear that extra sign implication. It's a plus 6. What did we say x represented? The oxidation state of sulfur. Okay. What do you think? Awful? Easy? No, it's not that good. Not too bad. Okay, good. So let's make it more difficult. Mike? Yeah. Something I've been doing, and I, I don't know, maybe this will help somebody else, but, but in the, um, as I read through the text in the exercises, when I come up to the, you know, you get a page of text and then you got exercises to work, I actually work through those. Do the homework within the yeah, text? I don't just look at the answer. 
I, well, I check, I check my answer, but, but yeah. I work through them, and then that gives me that extra practice. Yep. And boy, that's just really been... So by the time so, I get to the homework questions... Yeah. Remember, the, right the homework is supposed to be kind of your bare minimum skeleton to kind of test you and see how you are doing with the understanding. Just going through and completing the homework doesn't mean you're going to do well. Right. Okay. If you complete the homework all on your own and you knew it and it was easy, yeah, absolutely, you'll do well because the homework was really easy. If you st attempt the homework and you're struggling with the homework, right. that means you're going to struggle even more on the exam because on the exam you don't have the aid of the textbook or the answers. Okay? So that means you have to do more problems. Right. Okay? So what can we do with this information? Well, what we'll do is tie it back to reactions. So I've given a new reaction up here okay, at the top of this. In theory, it's balanced. Uh, 10, yes. Sorry, I did do a good job balancing it. Okay. And then I went through and determined the oxidation states for every atom in the reactant and then repeated that for every atom in the product. Okay. So now what we're going to do is compare across the reaction. What happened to iodine? It started at a plus 5 oxidation state and it ends at a zero. How can we change the oxidation state? To change the oxidation state, we must change the balance of electrons. So to go from a plus 5 to a zero, what did we do? We had to gain electrons because we're becoming more negative. We're starting at a 5, and as we drop to zero, if we continue to drop, what happens? We become negative. Okay. So we're becoming more negative by going from a plus 5 to a 0. How do we become more negative? We have to gain negatively charged things. What things do we have that are negatively charged? Electrons. So what happened to iodine is that it gained electrons. What happened to oxygen? Negative 2 to negative 2. Nothing changed. Okay, so we could care less about that. Yeah? I, I could not get that oxygen. I could not get it to come out. Can you work through that one? Get oxygen to come out? Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't get it. I couldn't What's the oxidation it. state of oxygen? Negative two. Negative two. Negative two. What's the oxidation state of oxygen? Negative, oh. Negative two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oxygen is just that rule. Okay. okay. Anytime you see oxygen in a compound, it's negative two. When is oxygen not going to be negative two? When it's in its elemental state. In that case, our oxygen has what charge? Or our oxidation state? Zero. Zero. Okay, so as far as you are concerned, there are only two oxidation states for oxygen. Zero and negative two. The only time it's zero is when we have oxygen all by itself. When we take a look at oxygen in this reaction, at no point is it ever by itself. So it will always be negative two. Okay. If we go through and take a look at the carbon... In the reactant, it's a plus 2. In the product, it's a plus 4. How do we go from a plus 2 to a plus 4? We will have to lose electrons. Okay? Remember, we can't change our positives by adding protons. Ah, I've had a sneeze bugging me all day, and it's <laughs> not going away. I've had... Uh, that positive, uh, uh, <laughs> we cannot change the positive charge by adding protons, okay? We change, if we change our protons, we change <coughs> the element. The only thing we can change is the electrons. So to become positive, we're going to have to remove that negative charge. So it's a loss of electrons, okay? So... The next step of this is saying gain of electrons and loss of electrons uh, for whatever reason is either too many letters, too many syllables, or not scientific fancy sounding enough. So what do we come up with? We add some extra definitions. The loss of electrons is defined as oxidation. The gain of electrons is defined as reduction. So instead of referring to a reaction and saying iodine gained electrons, we can say iodine was reduced. Instead of saying 
carbon uh, lost electrons, we can say carbon was oxidized. Okay, so it sort of simplifies our statements, um, and it sounds a little bit cooler too. It's so confusing though. I still, every time I look at oxidation and reduction, I, I just can't figure it out. You gain something, but you reduce? It's like, wait. So where did these original terms come from? Okay. The original oxidation term came from probably the Navy or some form of mariner. Okay. Why? When we generated metal boats. What was the material we used? Metal. What metal? Iron. Iron. What happens to iron when it loses electrons? Rust. It rusts. What is the formula for rust? <coughs> Fe2O3. What is O the element for or symbol for? Oxygen. Oxygen. What happened to iron? It was oxidized. So one of the alternate definitions that you could look at is in oxidation, you're gaining oxygen bonds. Doesn't always work for us because if we look at that uh, we could kind of look at that reaction. We could look at uh, either the gaining or loss uh, of oxygen bonds. Okay? So that's where the oxidation term originally came from. It doesn't always work because you don't always have oxygen being transferred in an individual reaction. So we had to come up with what was really occurring, which was the transfer of electrons. Okay? So the oxidation term is really just coming from the initial observation okay, of adding more oxygens to the structure. So what happens when we reduce? We're going to reduce the number of oxygen bonds to our structure. Okay? And again, like I said, it doesn't always work, but it's pretty close. So if we take a look at iodine, what happened to iodine as we go from left to right in the reaction? So it gained electrons, which means reduction. What happened to the formula? We started at I2O5 and we became I2. What happened to the number of oxygen bonds? We reduced the number of oxygen bonds. What type of reaction was it? Reduction. So what happened to match up in this case? So those extra terms are ultimately a carryover from past uh, chemists that had no idea of what electrons and protons were. Okay? So that's where those terms are, are propagating from. Okay? How do we keep it straight? That's the next thing. What I tend to do is re remember Leo says Ger. And you'll find, with, particularly if you move further through chemistry, uh, 152, you see a lot of uh, redox reactions. And almost always when I get asked a question, you'll see me mumble off in the corner because usually I'm trying to hide that I can't remember. Leo says, Ger, oh, Leo, loss of electron oxidation. Okay. And I'll mumble it to myself so that I know what's going on because I forget it all the time. Okay. That's what the mnemonic devices are there for. Do not try and keep it straight in your head. Write it down. Leo says, Ger. Okay, or Leo Ger. Hopefully that'll help you remember that. So when we're looking at Leo, loss, electrons, oxidation. When we're looking at reduction or Ger, we're looking at gain, electrons, reduction. The first letter of each of those words is our mnemonic device. Yes? Um, I don't get what you got with the plus five for iodine. So the plus five for iodine, just kind of waiting for someone to ask just to see. Let's go through and determine our oxidation states, because maybe I did it wrong. Okay. What is the, how many iodines are there? What is the oxidation state of iodine? X plus the number of oxygens. There's five times its oxidation state. What's the overall charge? Overall charge? Our overall charge, where I'm circling violently in blue. Oh, two on the Oh, zero. Yeah. Yeah. I just heard a couple people saying five, so I kept violently circling. Okay. So we get two x. It was more violent for me, I guess, than for you. Negative ten equals zero. Two x equals ten. Divide both sides by two. X equals plus five. It's nice to see I did it right. Okay. So the Leo says Ger one is the one that I primarily will push on students. There are other options. I've heard of two more. I've only, but I only remember one of them. That's the, I, I, that's the best. That's the 
the other one that I've heard that apparently all the faculty here use except me, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain. You get oil rig. Okay? I think that's a bit silly because why would you use the I? It's on a two-letter word. You almost always remove two-letter words from your mnemonic devices. But regardless, oil rig works just as well. You get the exact same definition. Whatever you want to use or whatever you do to get that memorized and put down into your, uh, into your head and then onto the paper for your exam, I don't care. Get it there. Okay? It doesn't say electrons. Yeah, I don't like that either. So yeah, like I said, I don't like it. I don't use it. Uh, Leo says Gur is the one I prefer. It's the one I'll stick with. Um, up to you on what you want to work with. Okay. Yeah, I, like I said, every other chemist that I've talked to that works here uses oil rig, which makes no sense to me, but that's what they use. What is Leo, by the way? So we're going to re-elaborate that one. What does Leo mean? Greek? Or the Greek meaning of Leo? Lion. Leo the lion. What do lions do? Grr. There's your Leo Grr. Okay. So that's the intent behind that. You're scared? Thanks. That's what I was trying for. Uh, was there a hand? I had a, yeah, but it turned out to be stupid. Okay. Other questions on that? I wasn't going to do the hand motions. I figured that would be a bit over the top. I, I know it's Halloween and all, but... Okay. So, I'm sure we just doubled down on it. We said, okay, we've got oxidation states. Now we made it more difficult by applying this oxidation reduction thing just to make things even more difficult. I still don't quite understand why this was even a necessary thing to do. Um, they came up with this idea of an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. Yeah, that they are back buttwards, to put it nicely. Um, they just, they're doing the opposite. So what we're saying by an agent is that that agent is causing something else to do that. So if we're looking at an oxidizing agent, that agent caused something else to be oxidized. Okay. Well, if something else was oxidized, what had to happen to the agent? It was reduced. It was reduced. All right? So we see kind of an opposite relationship. If we've got a reducing agent, that agent caused something else to be reduced. What happened to it? It was oxidized. Your agent was oxidized. Okay? So ultimately what these two extra definitions are is that an English major busted in and said you're applying... <laughs> Oxidation and reduction in odd references. You have to make it an adverb or adjective or whatever the heck it is. And so you introduce the idea of the ing, or if you really wanted to, you could use uh, the ant ending. So an oxidant is the same thing as an oxidizing agent. It caused something else to be oxidized. All right? Yep. I think you should just tell us how you really <laughs> about which? The English majors or this? Yes. <laughs> My sister, I've got a sister-in-law that's an English major. She's, she's good. She's good. I won't make too much fun of her. Not in public. <laughs> or not being recorded. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay, so questions about this. Okay. Next kind of interesting point that I definitely meant to address before we did our agents. Uh, let me make sure it's not up here. Yeah, I don't want to quite do that yet. Um, when we go through and look at these, we almost always have Leo says Gur. Well, why don't we ever just think Leo? Why do we have to associate Gur with that? What happens if we lose electrons? So let's pick a new example. Let's say... I start with sodium and its elemental state, so its oxidation state is zero, and I take it to sodium ion. Okay. Is this equation balanced? Okay, this is where it gets a little bit weird. And we will see we'll see the balancing addition in a little bit. There is an issue with this. It's technically not balanced. Okay. The question becomes why. 
there's a sodium atom and a sodium atom. That suggests it being balanced, right? <coughs> but what else changed? We've lost an electron. In sodium solid, I had an electron. In sodium ion, that electron's not there. Electrons, just like protons and neutrons, are a form of matter. Remember, when we draw an equation, we cannot create or destroy matter. So if I've got this equation written, somehow across this reaction, I have destroyed an electron. Okay? So when we go through to balance our redox reactions, not only are we going to have to account for the individual atoms, we must also be careful of charge. If the charge changes, we have to make sure that our balance of charge across the reaction balances out. Okay? If we were just going to look at this one reaction, we can do that or balance this out by adding our electron. Okay? When we look at sodium, we said it's a... Uh, sorry color-coded wrong. Loss of electrons was our oxidation. What does that loss mean? That loss implies that our electron was a product. So we would need to write the electron on the product side. Should it be on the product side? What's the charge of sodium atom, or sodium solid? Sodium solid, our reactant. It's zero. What's the charge of our sodium ion? Plus one. So we're looking at zero plus one. Our charge doesn't balance. We added the electron to which side? The product side. What's the charge on an electron? What happens when I bring the positive sodium near my negative electron? The charge cancels. The charge across the reaction is now balanced. I may have distributed where that charge is located, but the charge is now accounted for. It is properly balanced. Okay? And we will look at this again in more depth in a couple, uh, a couple minutes here. But the issue that I really wanted to get to was, would we expect this to ever happen in nature? We take sodium element, we set it down, boom, it becomes sodium ion, and it releases these electrons off into the ether. No. No. Why does it not happen? Kind of. Why does it need something to react with, though? What's the part that's reactive? The electron. Your electron is incredibly unstable, which is why when we tried to build elements, where did we put our electrons? Lowest energy closest to the nucleus first. Our electrons cannot exist in a free state. So when we look at the reaction of sodium going to sodium ion, that is technically a half reaction. And that half reaction will not occur until we give the other half. What is the other half going to have to do? It has to gain electrons. Okay? So our sodium, in this case, lost an electron. It has to give that electron up to something else. So in this case, I've got an oxidation. For the oxidation to occur, what else do I need? <coughs> I need a reduction. So when we look at our agents, our oxidizing agents and our reducing agents, these are always going to be effectively tied. So if I have something that's oxidized, if an oxidizing agent comes in and oxidizes something else, it caused that something else to be oxidized, which means that something else had to lose electrons. Where do those electrons go? To the agent. The agent must now physically remove those electrons from whatever was oxidized. If it removes them, what is it now? It just gained electrons. It was reduced. Your redox reactions are always partnered. We cannot do them on their own. We will pull them and separate them out into their half reactions so that we can simplify and see what's happening. But we will not ever see them react on their own. They always have a partner reaction with them. Okay. So oxidation states. Um, yes. How much of this do I want to do? Let's go ahead and do the first one together, and then I'll make you guys do the second one, and then you can do the third one on your own at home. What's our oxidation state for that first atom? How do you know it's plus two? 
Right? There's only one thing there. If we went through to evaluate, we've got 1 times x equals the overall charge of plus 2. What is x? Plus 2. Our oxidation state in this case was relatively obvious, if you will. Uh, am I color coding this right? 2 to 4 is loss of electrons. That's oxidation. Let's color code this a little bit better. So it's plus 2. Now it's 3D, right? Did you bring your glasses? Ha ha, fine. No one laugh. What's our tin in the product? Plus 4. What happened to go from a plus 2 to a plus 4? We had to lose electrons. How many electrons did we lose? Two. Two electrons. What occurred to tin? It was oxidized. Okay. Before we can look at the agent, we have to verify that it was partnered with something else. So let's take a look at our iron. What happened to the iron? We started at what charge? Oxidation state? Plus 3, and it went to? Plus 2. Plus two. What happened to go from plus 3 to plus 2? It had to gain one electron. If it gained electrons, what happened to it? Reduced. It was reduced. <coughs> okay. Where did it gain that electron from? Tin. So it caused tin to be oxidized. So our iron plus 3 is also known as an oxidizing agent or an oxidant because it caused our iron, or sorry, our tin, to be oxidized. Well, if we go back to our <coughs> tin, where did it force those two electrons onto? It forced iron to take them. So it forced iron to be reduced. So our tin is a reducing agent or a reductant. Okay. So what we're trying to do is evaluate how these things changed and then apply the definitions back to them. Okay. To be able to apply them, you need to know the definitions. So make sure you work with it, either work with it enough or memorize those definitions. Okay. Um, I will leave that up there and let you guys go ahead and work on the second part. If you've got what is the oxidation state of copper? Zero. Sorry, I guess I should have said in the reactant. What is the oxidation state of copper in the product? Plus two. Plus two. How do we go from a zero to a plus two? We have to lose two electrons, which means it was oxidation. Or what were you adding there? Or we could call it a reductant or reducing agent, but I'm getting tired of writing, so I'm not going to write that. Okay. What do we do now? Now we're going to have to test the other one. Remember, when we do oxidation reduction, it's typically only two things that are two atoms that are changing their states. We're looking at one atom oxidizing, the other one being reduced. Since we found one that was oxidized, we darn well better find one that was reduced. Otherwise, there's something wrong with the question. Okay. So we would go through and evaluate our oxidation states. Which atom do we want to look at? Nitrogen or oxygen? Why nitrogen, not oxygen? Oxygen, as far as you are concerned, has what oxidation state? Negative 2, as long as it's in a compound. If it's by itself, then it's 0. Is nitrogen ever by itself in this reaction? Nope. So its oxidation state will always be negative 2. doesn't change. So if we take a look at nitrogen... I'm going to say our nitrogen on our reactant is our plus 5 and not show the work for that because we did that one. And our... Well, you can look and you can hold up on that. <laughs> you are absolutely right, but what you are doing is doing all the math in your head. Okay. Okay. So, and that's why I'm kind of being rude and interrupting you on that. Right. What I want you guys to do is work the math out until you are consistently right. If you are consistently right, then you can shortcut it as much as you want. OK? 
Okay? So when we go to our product, we go through the exact same math that we've been going through. There is one nitrogen. We don't know its oxidation state, plus two oxygens. Oxidation state of oxygen is negative two. Our overall charge is zero. For the negative ones, okay, there is a common misconception that you really have to watch out for here. Why is it not negative one? Look in that upper right-hand corner. What is the charge? Zero. Not to call you out on it. Did you say negative one? Mm -hmm. Why did you say negative one? Because I looked at the nitrate on the three of them. Okay, well, that's a different reason, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think of that one. What you need to do is only be focused about the molecule that you're looking at. So that's how you would avoid that issue. We are only concerned about the oxidation state of nitrogen in this molecule. So I don't care about the reactant. I don't care about any other products. The whole rest of the problem disappears. The only thing we are looking at is NO2. Okay. There are people that will still put negative 1. Any idea why they might put negative 1 for the charge? Have you seen that before? What is that? It's the polyatomic ion nitrite. Did we make the polyatomic ion nitrite? No. How do you know that? There is no charge written in the upper right-hand corner. So this is one of the things where you can skip the memorization. Okay? That charge will be given to you. If it's not given to you, there's two explanations. One, you weren't supposed to have it. Don't put it in there. Or two, there's a typo on the exam. If that's the case, or if you think that's the case, raise your hand. I'll take a look at it. More than likely, what I'll tell you is no, there wasn't a typo. Try again. Okay? So, the charge is zero. We can now go through to balance. What's our oxidation state? Plus four. Thanks for adding the plus. We now have our oxidation state of plus four. We went from a plus five to... How did we do that? We had to gain electrons. So we're looking at a reduction, which also means that our nitrate was an oxidant. Okay. For that last problem, there is one extra piece of information that we've kind of left out of this. Um, not quite intentionally, but it happened. Um, sodium. What happens to sodium when you put it in a compound? It always becomes a plus one. If its charge is plus one, what is its oxidation state? Plus one. What happens if we put magnesium into a compound? It becomes plus two. What's its oxidation state? Plus two. So the group one and group two metals, their charges are the same as their oxidation states. Okay? So you can kind of sneak out of that uh, using that information. Okay? I do leave you to go home and solve the rest of that, figure out what those charges are on everything, or your oxidation states are on all of those things. Um, but the answers are up there. They should, in theory, be correct. Um, so you can go back and compare and verify that you got those same answers. Okay? Questions about identifying your oxidation states? Okay. Go ahead and you can keep your notes out. We'll keep it open note. The first two. But for our oxidation states for carbon. Yes, it is. 2 times x plus 6 times plus 1 equals 0 for our overall charge. So when we go through to solve that, sorry, I can't do the math in my head, minus 6, x equals negative 3, right? Yeah. If we go to the product, what happens? You should get carbon being a plus 4 oxidation state. Uh, the next part of it is asking, is the combustion reaction example of a redox reaction? If it's a redox, what happened? There was a transfer of electrons. We went from a minus 3 to a plus 4. Was there a transfer of an electron? Yeah. So that is absolutely a redox reaction.
I, the last thing that we're going to end with is taking a stab at balancing. Okay? Um, you won't be tested as heavily on the balancing of your redox reaction, but I do want to kind of approach it. I still got two or three minutes. I did this part in one minute this morning. Okay? Sometimes it's a bit trivial, sometimes it's not. Okay? This case is one of the trivial ones. How many zincs do we have as a reactant? How many zincs do we have as a product? One. What's that two that you guys are seeing for your zinc? You're seeing the charge. Watch out for that. Okay. How many hydrogens do we have as a reactant? How many hydrogens do we have as a product? How do we fix it? Two in front of our hydrogen. Now we've got our balanced equation. Okay. Because this is redox, we could also go through and check charge. What's our total charge on the reactant side? What's the charge of zinc? Zero. What's the charge on hydrogen? How many hydrogens are there? Two. Our charge is plus two. We take a look at our product. What's the charge on our product side? Plus two with our zero there. Our charge balances. So in this case, we're able to use the atoms to balance out our charge, but it doesn't always work. Okay. So if we take a look at this one, how many tins are on the reactant? How many on the product? How many irons is a reactant? How many irons is a product? Is that balanced? No. Why is it not balanced? Look at your charge. What's the charge on the reactant side? Charge on the product side? Plus six. Is our charge balanced? No, which means the equation's not balanced. So these would be kind of your non-trivial examples. You have to watch out for that charge when looking at the redox reactions. Okay? There are two approaches to balancing it. The textbook goes through a method that involves less writing um, and is equally valid as what I would go through and do. Okay? So let's evaluate how the textbook approaches this. We start with each of our atoms, say our tin, and say what happened to it. We went from tin plus two to Tin plus four. What changed? It had to lose two electrons, which is oxidation. Dang it. Stupid color coding. I should have given up on it. If we look at our iron, what happened to the iron? It gained one electron. So our electrons don't balance out. So what the textbook goes through and does is say, take the coefficients on your electrons and then put them onto the atoms, but cross it. So our tin lost two electrons. So what do we do? We put a two in front of the irons. Our iron gained one electron, so we put a one in front of our tins. If we go through and evaluate our charge, what do we get? Oof. We should get plus six plus two, which gives us plus eight on the react or part sorry product side, plus four and plus four. We get our plus eight. Our charge is balanced. Now our equation is balanced. Hi. I will walk through another example of that, uh, or same, sorry, that same example in the next sequence of slides where I break it into the half reactions as opposed to jamming it all down and not really writing much. Okay? Uh, both methods do the same exact thing, get the exact same result. Um, all I'm trying to do is show more of that work. Okay? You have all the